Welcome, friends. This is A Course in Miracles, Palm Beach Study Group. Today we're in Chapter 14, Section 10, The Equality of Miracles, Paragraph 1. When no perception stands between God and his creations, or between his children and their own, the knowledge of creation must continue forever. The reflections you accept into the mirror of your mind in time, but bring eternity nearer or farther. But eternity itself is beyond all time. Reach out of time and touch it with the help of its reflection in you. And you will turn from time to holiness, as surely as the reflection of holiness calls everyone to lay all guilt aside. Reflect the peace of heaven here and bring this world to heaven. For the reflection of truth draws everyone to truth, and as they enter into it, they leave all reflections behind. So this is basically talking about the transition between uh, moving from ego mind to spirit mind. Perception is a key word for ego. Uh, God and creations are key words for spirit. Knowledge is a key word for spirit. Reflections are, are ego. So if we reread it, it would go something like, when, when no ego perceptions stand between God and you, the knowledge of spirit continues forever. The reflections you accept into the mirror of your mind in time but bring eternity nearer or farther. So you're either looking with ego mind and you're going further away where you're looking with spirit mind and you're coming closer. But eternity itself, but spirit itself is beyond all time. Reach out of time and touch it. So this is metaphor. With the help of its reflection in you, with the help of the spirit within yourself, reach out of the ego and, and touch the spirit within you. And you will turn from time, from ego, to holiness. As surely as the reflection of holiness calls everyone to lay all guilt aside. That's, that's how we get there. We have to lay aside all guilt to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Reflect the peace of heaven here in while you're in the body and bring this world to heaven. Bring your physical self to heaven for the reflection of truth draws everyone to truth. And as they enter into it, they leave all reflections behind. In other words, when you're completely into the spirit mind, you don't need reflections anymore because you'll know the truth of spirit, which is eternal. And there's no reason to perceive or reflect anything anymore. Any comments, questions? I have a comment. Um, to me, it seems like in this paragraph is the the idea the heaven is being described you know where it says bring heaven to earth is that what it says 
but it's also describing what heaven is with no ego, no reflection, no um, guilt. Right. And, and so to me, it's a, um, a description of heaven. Thank you, Helen. Okay, let's continue. I In have a heaven. question. Oh, yes. Go okay. Ahead. When it says here in number two, the reflection you have set into the mirror of your mind in time. For me, uh, uh, is when I when I read in time, um, it's like for me, it's ego, like always. <laughs> but when it says, but bring eternity, like I be near, nearer or farther. And, and, and I don't know how can I, how can, I have a reflection in time uh, if I always be in the same place. It's, that's what you understand about the course of miracle. I'm in heaven, even I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm yeah. always with the father. And then how can I be like nearer or farther? Is, that is my comment or my question. Yes, we have two, we have two minds. We have a split mind. We have the ego mind and the spirit mind, and we have to move in between. And right in the middle is called the decider, where it, we have free will to choose. Time is a key word for the ego world, because time does not exist in spirit. Eternity exists in spirit. Time only begins, uh, only um uh, is perceivable in the ego universe, in the ego, in the world of, of bodies. So that's why it says uh, the reflections in the mirrors of your mind in time, in your ego mind. And, and because we can decide to move from ego into spirit, we can decide to release the guilt. We can decide to forgive. We can decide to act as much as possible uh, out of spirit, love, peace, joy, what have you. And so then we we are getting closer. That brings us nearer to spirit. Or we can choose to uh, work with uh, hate and anger and guilt and uh, judge, negative judgments, and that would bring us further from spirit. But it all happens in our mind. Does that help you? Okay, then let's go on to paragraph two. In heaven, reality is shared and not reflected. By sharing its reflection here, its truth becomes the only perception the Son of God accepts. And thus, Remembrance of his father draws on him, and he can no longer be satisfied with anything but his own reality. You on earth have no conception of limitlessness, for the world you seem to live in is a world of limits. In this world, it is not true that anything without order or difficulty can occur. The miracle, therefore, has a unique function and is motivated by a unique teacher who brings the laws of another world to this one. The miracle is the one thing you can do that transcends order, being based not on differences 
but on equality. So again, the, the more that we think in spirit mind, the more that we operate out of spirit mind, the more we're actually bringing heaven into earth. And heaven's reality is shared, not reflected. In the ego, everything is reflected like a house of mirrors. But in heaven, the reality is shared. And, and when, we, when we become aware that we're spiritual beings and we operate from that awareness, then we're remembering our Father, God, Spirit. There's many different words that can be used. And that is, is what satisfies. And that is where you get the uh, concept of limitlessness because spirit is eternal and is not subject to time. So that's our like our job. Our job as human beings is to evolve spiritually to the point where we can bring spirit into our physical reality. And it all happens in our minds, how we think about things and how we behave. So number three, it says miracles are not in competition. And the number of them that you can do is limitless. They can be simultaneous and legion. This is not difficult to understand once you conceive of them as possible at all. What is more difficult is to grasp, what is more difficult to grasp is the lack of order of difficulty that stamps the miracle is something that must come from elsewhere, not from here. For the world's viewpoint, this is impossible. So um, let's let's go through that again. The, the miracle happens whenever we embrace the spirit. The miracle happens whenever we forgive. The miracle happens whenever we uh, express uh, love, uh, joy, peace, um, any of the spiritual qualities. And they're not in competition with each other, and they're limitless. Miracles, you can just create miracles all the time, just by being kind, by being thankful, by by forgiving people, by letting go of guilt, by acting out of love. There's no limit to the number of miracles you can do. It's just a matter of operating from your spiritual self. Any comments, questions? Number four, perhaps you have been aware of lack of competition among your thoughts, which even though they may conflict, can occur together and in great numbers. You may indeed be so used to this that it causes you little surprise. Yet you are also used to classifying some of your thoughts as more important, larger or better, wiser or more productive and valuable than others. This is true of the thoughts that cross the mind of those who think they live apart. 
where some are reflections of heaven, while others are motivated by the ego, which but seems to think. It's just describing a person who has a lot of thoughts in their minds, and some of these thoughts can be conflicting, good thoughts, bad thoughts, loving thoughts, hateful thoughts, what have you. And that's the true of most people because they are caught in this paradox of their spiritual beings inside the ego physical world, and they just don't know, you know, how to think or where to go or, or what to do. And it can be confusing and conflicting. And the Course is trying to teach us how to resolve that conflict, how to move out of ego thinking into spirit thinking. Any comments, questions? Paragraph five. The result is a weaving, a changing pattern that never rests and is never still. It shifts unceasingly across the mirror of your mind, and the reflections of heaven last but a moment and grow dim as darkness bolts them out. Where there was light, darkness removes it in an instant. And alternating patterns and alternating patterns of light and darkness sweep constantly across your mind. The little sanity that still remains is held together by a sense of order that you establish. Yet the very fact that you can do this and bring any order into chaos shows that you are not an ego, and that more than an ego must be in you, for the ego is chaos. And if it were all of you, no order at all would be possible. Yet through the order you impose upon your mind limits the ego. Yet through the order you impose upon your mind limits the ego, it also limits you. To order is to judge and to arrange by judgment. Therefore, it is not your function, but the Holy Spirit's. So it's basically describing a person who's caught up in ego and doesn't understand their spirituality, this most of this paragraph, but it's pointing to the fact that that if we allow the Holy Spirit, the teacher within us, to show us the way, he can sort it out. It is his function to do so if we but let him. Most people stand in his way and try to do it for themselves and constantly fight with, with themselves instead of turning all of their problems and troubles over to the Holy Spirit within them and ask to be shown the solutions. Any questions, comments? I wonder if um, the example of light would be love and the example of darkness would be, um, you know, unhappiness, hatred, you know, that kind of thing. Because where it says, where there was light, darkness removes it in an instant. The darkness removes the love. And alternating patterns of life and darkness sweep constantly across the mind, causing, to me, I would say, confusion of some sort, which is part of ego. Yes, and like I said, that whole first part of this paragraph is a description of a person living in ego mind, not 
having any um, semblance of, of his spiritual mind or her spiritual mind. And so it's it's just describing what we've all we all know this, we've all been there. Some of us are still very much caught up in all of this ego chaos. Others of us have progressed to one degree or another and are not so caught up in it anymore. But yes, hatred, anger, all of those jealousies, ego things will, will shut out the light. But that doesn't mean the light isn't there. It's because the light is always there. Yeah, that's the key. Right. And, and I think even if there is a judge meant for anything, is if I just found my, I find myself like having a, a some kind of judgment, uh, for me, I've been learning also that it's not any guilt for that. It's just, it's just okay. I just noticed that, and then again, give that uh, to the Holy Spirit, because it yeah. it have it happened to me, but it was like long time ago, I just blame myself like oh, and then it's uh, now it's like uh, okay, it's not just. Treat myself with kindness. Yes, very good. Even, mm -hmm. Yes, that's that's a very good description of how to, how to proceed. You know, we all make mistakes. the 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 the, the, the um, important thing is that that when we realize we've made a mistake, that we don't judge ourselves and place guilt upon ourselves, but that we learn from that and say, okay, I know not to do that again, you know, and and just continue on with your life and forgive it. Uh, paragraph six. It will seem difficult for you to learn that you have no basis at all for ordering your thoughts. This lesson the Holy Spirit teaches by giving you the shining examples of miracles to show you that your way of ordering is wrong, but that a better way is offered you. The miracle offers exactly the same response to every call for help. It does not judge the call. It merely recognizes what it is and answers accordingly. It does not consider which call is louder or greater or more important. You may wonder how you who are still bound to judgment can be asked to do that which requires no judgment of your own. The answer is very simple. The power of God and not of you engenders miracles. The miracle itself is but the witness that you have the power of God in you. This is the reason why the miracle gives equal blessings to all who share in it. And that is also why everyone shares in it. The power of God is limitless and being always maximal, it offers everything to every call from anyone. There is no order of difficulty here. A call for help is given help. 
So earlier in earlier in the course, we, it was explained that when someone acts out of anger, that's a call for help. When somebody acts out of hate, that's a call for help. When somebody acts out of jealousy, that's a call for help. When someone acts out of their ego selves, that's a call for help. And basically what this is saying is that the spirit is always there to help everybody flip that, to turn the anger to love, to turn the hatred to love, to turn the, the jealousy to forgiveness and kindness. And, and, but if you don't, if you don't turn within yourself and ask for help, then it's not going to happen. You need to call for help. And if you do, you will be helped. And that's the miracle. And it applies to everybody equally. And there is no order of difficulties. It doesn't matter what the thing that happened in the ego world was. Spirit doesn't even see the things that happen in the ego world. Any comments, questions? Number seven, the only judgment involved is the Holy Spirit's one division into two categories, one of love and the other, the call for love. You cannot safely make this division for you are much too confused either to recognize love or to believe that everything else is nothing but a call for love. You are too bound to form and not to content. What you consider content is not content at all. It is merely form and nothing else. For you do not respond to what a brother really offers you but only to the particular perception of his offering by which the ego judges it. And again, this is a description of somebody operating out of ego mind. I know it keeps, it keeps seeing you, that you can't make this division, you can't, but you, you have to, Read it from where you are. If, if you've progressed along spiritually enough that you can understand that people's acting out in ego is a call for love, then this doesn't necessarily apply to you as an individual. But for anybody who's still caught up in ego, that's this does apply to them. It says, you cannot safely make this division for you are much too confused to either recognize love or believe that everything else is nothing but a call for love. That's describing a person who's steeped in the ego. Any questions, comments? Number eight. The ego is incapable, incapable of understanding content and is totally unconcerned with it. To the ego, if the form is acceptable, the content must be. Otherwise, it will attack the form. If you believe you understand something of the dynamics of the ego, let me assure you that you understand nothing of it. For of yourself, you could not understand it. 
the study of the ego is not the study of the mind. In fact, the ego enjoys studying itself and thoroughly approves the undertakings of students who would analyze it, thus approving its importance. Yet they but study form with meaningless content, for the teacher is senseless, though careful to conceal this fact behind impressive sounding words, but which lack any consistent sense when they are put together. Again, that's how ego operates. Number nine, it is characteristic of the ego's, this is characteristic of the ego's judgments. Separately, they seem to hold, but put them together and the system of thought that arises from joining them is incoherent and utterly chaotic. For form is not enough for meaning and the underlying lack of content makes a cohesive system impossible. Separation, therefore, remains the ego's chosen condition, where no one alone can judge the ego truly. Yet when two or more join together in searching for truth, the ego can no longer defend its lack of content. The fact of union tells them it is not true. And that reflects back to the Bible saying where, where two or more are gathered in my name. Um, so for the past three paragraphs, we've, we've just been uh, reading about definition of ego and um, trying to get a picture of how ego works. Are there any questions, comments? Paragraph 10. It is impossible to remember God in secret and alone. Oh, let me let me go back then. Uh, in paragraph nine, sentence four, separation therefore remains the ego's chosen condition. And that's how the ego was created. We thought we could be separate from God, that we could separate ourselves from God. And that's what caused the ego to be created in the first place. Uh, it's a false notion. We cannot be separated from God. That's an impossibility. But we think we are. We think, oh, we're down here on earth. God's up there in heaven somewhere, and, and we have to wait until we die, and then maybe we'll go to heaven, maybe we'll go to hell, blah, 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 and then we're going to be judged and all that. That's all ego thinking. None of, none of that is true. And, and Jesus, what did Jesus ta teach? He said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. And that's what the Course is teaching us. The, the spirit is within us. It's within our minds, in our spirit mind. We have the Holy Spirit indwelling within us, the voice for God. It's impossible to be separated from God. And, but the ego thrives on this idea of separation. Any comments, questions? Number 10, 
It is impossible to remember God in secret and alone. For remembering him means you are not alone and are willing to remember it. Take no thought for yourself, for no thought you hold is for yourself. If you would remember your father, let the Holy Spirit order your thoughts and give the only answer with which he answers you. Everyone seeks for love as you do, but knows it not unless he joins with you in seeking it. If you undertake the search together, you will you bring with you a light so powerful that what you see is given meaning. The lonely journey fails because it has excluded what it would find. And the Course teaches that there's only one of us, that I am you and you are me and we are he and he is us, us and that there's only one of us and that there's only one God and that we're all one. We're one with God and one with one another. And so it's in that joining, that's where we find true love. It's in that understanding and knowing that there is no separation, that we truly are all spirit, true beings, and that we are one with ourselves, with others, with our fathers. Comments, questions? At the y, local YMCA in Boynton Beach, there's a plaque on the wall that stands out, and it's a statement by John. Um, it, I can't remember the exact wording, but let all be one is, is essentially the essence of it. Mm -hmm. And you should take a marker and rock over it and say, all is one. <laughs> I have a, a comment. Yeah. It happens to me that uh, sometimes I, I, I do prefer like it says lonely journey, but it's not, I don't feel alone. Because I think that everything that we are, that is being, that the Holy Spirit is, is showing me is for everyone, even if they are not bodies at the same place. And that's what I, when I just, I, I don't feel lonely. I don't, when I read the, when I read here, the lonely journey fails because it has excluded what it will find. Um, it's not like I'm, I just decided to, I don't know, read by myself, but like, oh, I know, and no, and no one's know. <laughs> no, I, 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 when I'm reading, it's like, I'm, um, I, I, it's like, I, I, for me, I'm, the, I am mean, have the knowledge that I, we, we, I part of the bigger myself, it's not me. Uh, and I don't know if that is if that it means when it says that we have to be together, it has to be physical together, uh, or just be conscious that we are not alone. That everything yeah. that we are healing is for all us. Yes, it doesn't. It it it. It's not that we have to be physically with each other. Because the, the whole physicality is, is uh, the ego. Mm -hmm. bodies, bodies are of the ego. The spirit is, is just pure thought energy. Um, it's, it's the realization that we, are, that we are one, that there is no separation, that we are not alone. Um, in the spirit world, there there are no bodies in at all. So it doesn't 
that's not the thing. So yeah, sure, you're right. And, and thank you. Number 11. As God communicates to the Holy Spirit in you, so does the Holy Spirit translate his communications through you so you can understand them. God has no secret communications, for everything of him is perfectly open and freely accessible to all, being for all. Nothing lives in secret, and what you would hide from the Holy Spirit is nothing. Every interpretation you would lay upon a brother is senseless. Let the Holy Spirit show him to you and teach you both his life and his call for love. Neither his mind nor yours holds more than these two orders of thought. So again, the Holy Spirit is the voice for God. The Holy Spirit dwells within our mind. The Holy Spirit will is our constant connection to God. God has no secret communications. Everything is freely accessible to all. And um, so don't don't lay judgments upon your brother. Remember, it's either a call for love or a call for help. And our last paragraph, 12. The miracle is the recognition that this is true. Where there is love, your brother must give it to you because of what it is. But where there is a call for love, you must give it because of what you are. Earlier I said this course will teach you how to remember what you are, restoring to you your identity. We have already learned that this identity is shared. The miracle becomes the means of sharing it. By supplying your identity wherever it is not recognized, you will recognize it. And God himself, who wills to be with his son forever, will bless each recognition of his son with all the love he holds for him. Nor will the power of all his love be absent from any miracle you offer to his son. Now, how then? Can there be any order of difficulty among them? Are there any comments, questions? We have reached the end of our reading for today. I'd suggest that the last paragraph 12, you go back and reread and contemplate and meditate upon it. And, um, and again, if anyone has any comments or questions before we end about anything that we've read tonight, Well, seeing no raised hands, let's have a moment of silence and I will stop the recording. <laughs> 